just like other people. We love to sing, we love to dance. So one quick trick on uh, kind of assembling this thing is the first thing you do is you put in these little rubber grommets that uh, make the whole stack soft um, on the base plate and then you start assembling it. So if you tighten these down too much at the beginning, you won't be able to kind of sneak in these arms as you go and it'll be hard to line up these holes. So my trick is I put Loctite on the screws. I get these in so they're just threaded, like not tight at all, not even hand tight, just holding. Um, and then you insert the arm, and then you uh, put on the standoffs, and uh, then tighten them all down at once. And if you do it that way, it'll be a lot easier to assemble, and you won't be fighting little misalignments here and there, and you probably won't peel off this rubber. Um, also on this one, this is uh, for the golden ticket winner. Um, I'm using slightly shorter standoffs than what come with it. 28 millimeters come with it, just to make room for people that need a lot of room. Um, in this case, I'm using the Helio and a 4 in 32 bit and it fits nicely with these 25mm standoffs. If you're using ARM ESCs, you can just, you can actually like use 20mm standoffs to really squish it on down. Alright, more later. Okay, getting closer, um, I have the ESC installed and I have the uh, Unify Pro HV installed with the pigtail coming out. Got the XT60 on there. I also uh, grounded this little copper uh, shield, which is supposed to help the uh, kind of protect the helio from a lot of noise that these ESCs tend to make. Um, but I'm still going to flip the ESC, or the sorry, I'm still going to flip the FC over anyway, uh, just to be extra safe. So anyway, that's the progress so far. Uh, more to come. Okay, uh, got her about done. Um, I'll figure we'll go over the components in a little more detail uh, before I put the lid on her. Um, so, we got the uh, Wraith 32-bit uh, version 2 ESC, the copper shield that's grounded, uh, the Helio, the newest Helio, running the Odin, which I believe is the most recent firmware, uh, Odin firmware, and it's flipped over to just kind of add a little more insurance to uh, protection from noise from that noisy ESC. Um, we have a Unified Pro down there, hooked up to, to straight LiPo, of course. Um, one thing is it's, it's really critical on builds like this um, when the flag, or the, when the VTX is kind of hidden underneath the ESC, it's really important to run smart audio just because it's a pain to get in there with tweezers and press the button and you can't see the LED anyway. So just, if you're gonna do that on these modern small builds, especially with a four in one where it's really tight in there, run smart audio. It's one, it's one wire, it takes two seconds um, and it's pretty important and just makes life easier. Uh, run cam mini, no, run cam micro v2, I think. Uh, I took that out of another quad that has been on the in the pile forever. Um, and then an XM plus because Ferris runs free sky. Uh, and a little dipole just because it's easy um, and does not break. This I've never broken one of those because there's what's to break. Uh, one thing that's important when you run any really anything off a of UFL, especially if it's a heavier antenna. Uh, like the Axie or something bigger, is you gotta, gotta, gotta do strain relief. Gotta do it. Um, UFLs are great in that they're small and there's a, there's a, you know, mechanical click. You can feel it like a positive connection. Um, but what they suck at is strain. So if you don't do this, you're gonna rip your antenna off. You're gonna break it off, or, or worse, you're gonna break the UFL female or whatever, the, the, the VTX side, and then your VTX is toast. So, for God's sake, if you're not going to run one of those um, TPU bits that hold these things, do I have one of those? Somewhere? Somewhere? No? If you're not going to run one of those, if you're going to just let it dangle, um, strain relieve it. So the way I do it is I take a little uh, guy like this, I cut it to be very small, and I cut a little valley into it. I put the, I put the coax into the valley, and then, uh, so it kind of... Uh, envelops it and I zip tie that down with a little bit of slack on, on that side of it so you can really 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 tug on this thing and it's not gonna come off but do not skip that step uh, working out uh, we have the uh, race wires just because it's so much easier to change a motor out like if I blew this motor and didn't have the race wire I have to get in there in that little bird's nest uh, to change it out and that's a bitch um, I don't get why people don't like race wires, uh, but they make life easier. I didn't, we didn't have the FPV.FM ones in yet, 
Um, they haven't shown up in my mailbox yet, so he gets the plain old boring ones. Uh, you know what? Actually, <laughs> in a fit of hubris and uh, a false sense of celebrity, let's sign this thing, make him his own stop caps. Boom. How's that for having my head up my own ass? Um, okay. Uh, and then on the corners here, we got the Lightspec 2207, 2400s. I love these motors. Um, to be fair, I haven't tried a lot of other motors recently because uh, I, I don't know, I don't see why I would need to. These are kind of the perfect blend of the power and the efficiency for me. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. There's nothing else really going on. Oh, uh, the way these are mounted is cool. Um, so on these frames, on a lot of Xever frames now, um, the through holes here that hold the the bolt to the holds on the, the stack is actually there's a soft mount in there. So there's a, a little grommet that looks a lot like this grommet. Actually, it looks just like these little purple grommets uh, that go in there. It's an overboard hole. You put a grommet in there, it makes the whole it makes the whole stack pretty squishy. So then I ran a through bolt. I got two little pads here just to kind of space it out above the VTX. I got the ESC, which is itself soft mounted because, you know, the whole stack is soft mounted. From there, I have little rubber bobbins because uh, I had them around. Um, and then from there, I have these bobbins that are on the, the flight controller itself. So it's like, I mean, look at this thing. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, Oh, one more thing I did away from the camera, uh, because, you know, you, you don't want to get too much into the sausage making of this, is I put um, uh, some, some nice music to the ESC startup tone. You, re you guys ready for this? You ready? Yeah, eat your heart out. Okay, so one last thing here. Um, that I forgot is uh, like conformal and hot glue. So I have a bit of an order of operations for this. I have burned myself in the past. Um, so the way I do it now is as follows. I hook everything up, I you know solder all the pads, I make sure the motor spin, I make sure the video works, I make sure all of my peripherals work like GPS or smart audio or whatever. Um, and then I use hot glue. So on the underside of this board, all these wires here that are soldered to the pads have a bead of hot glue over them. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's just added insurance that those connections won't break. Um, I sometimes will run a little bit of hot glue along there and there, just to hold those in. Um, and that's what I do with that. And then I go fly it. Um, and if it flies well, uh, or at least flies in a way that demonstrates that it's not hooked up wrong, then I bring it back home before too long and I conformal stuff. So conformal's great in a couple ways. Um, in one way, you know, one thing that it does that's great, obviously, is it waterproofs, like it like almost completely waterproofs whatever component you conformal. Um, you have to take some caution if you're doing things like FCs because you do not want to get any conformal in the uh, USB. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, uh, but other things I think are important to conformal too. So I always conformal over here and here um, because I'm worried about like a blade of grass or a bug or something wet and conductive bridging these pads. And these pads are super close together. They're super tight. Um, another thing that I always conformal uh, is these guys right here, the main lipo pads, because I'm terrified that one day my hand will be wet or something and I'll do this to pull the battery off or I'll pick it up and just fry my hand. Um, so I, I just, right now it's not conformal. It's just a little bit hot glued. I'm gonna go fly it later today. And then if everything goes well, you know, knock on wood, then uh, we'll conformal it all. So just, that's the way I do it. Um, if you do it all right away and you go out in the field and you realize that something isn't hooked up right and has been conformal, you can solder through it. It's just a bitch. It's sticky and it, sm it really smells bad. It makes Elsky mad. And look at how upset she is about it. Are you mad about it? See, her tail wags when she's pissed.
But right now it's just on totally stock tune uh, with the butter pids or whatever activated, which I believe only affects D term, but I'm not sure. Sounds pretty good though. All right, it worked. Do you love it when I test over in the living room? Do you like that? Are you very happy when I do that? Hmm? Hey, have a paw. You want a treat? Can you sit on your butt? Wait. 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 Oh, wait. Wait. Okay, good girl. 